when we get to talking about college football, of course, NIL, transfer report, all these things come up in a negative way. But there are so many things and so many factors that go into it. So I'm going to ask the questions that you guys really want to know because we got a special guest up for you guys today. We have Aiden Childs, the man who's going to be the starting quarterback over for the Michigan State Spartans next season, man who transferred from Oregon State. Kid I've known, great kid, great family and everything in between. So you guys, make sure that you like, subscribe, tell a friend about The Unafraid Show, and most importantly, share. This is The Unafraid Show. Let's get to it. Now we are joined by Aiden Childs, quarterback for the Michigan State Spartans. Man is now a sophomore from Southern California out there uh, doing his thing out there at East Lansing and transferred from Oregon State over there. Uh, Aiden, welcome to the show, man. Appreciate you. Thank you for having me. Who would have thought that like two years ago we were we, we were at Fish, you trying to figure out where you were going to be and then a season in and now you're going to be the starting quarterback for Michigan State. Yeah, man. It's different for sure because, like, I remember the first time I met I met you and Damon and I was with Fish. Uh, I think I had, like, three, four offers, and I didn't know where I was going to go. But, yeah, it's, it's for sure. It's a change, man. It's cool, though. It's a good change. Yeah, so I, I want to go back to the recruiting scene for a minute because recruiting has changed since the advent of the transfer portal, and you've been on both sides of it where – um, where as a recruit, where you're going to go depends on what happens in the transfer portal. And then you shifted the landscape by, by where you went in the transfer portal. So going back to high school and recruiting, what was your recruiting process like? And, you know, going from, you know, transferring schools, then being a full-time starter at Downey. Um, well, first of all, the transfer, you know, I never got a fair opportunity, so. I had to go find a fair opportunity. So I went to Downey. Uh, didn't play a full season to my senior year, but I started getting offers like junior, summer, summer year, going into my senior year. And for me, I'll tell everybody, like the recruiting process was terrible. I, I hated it because I, I hated talking to coaches all day. I didn't realize I didn't have to talk to them, but I just felt like I had to, you know. But yeah. um hated that. And then, um, well, but like, I mean, it was also fun at first, you know, getting a few offers here and there, but then you start getting – Multiple, and then it's just like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to talk to all of you guys. Like sometimes I don't have interest in these schools, but you want to listen to them. You don't want to be rude. You don't want to burn a bridge. So, but um, I mean, overall, choosing Oregon State, it was, it was simple because they were the only school that really gave me an opportunity to start as a freshman. So it really came down to them. It came down to them, Kansas State, and UW. Yeah. And I never went on my Kansas State visit. My fault. My fault. But yeah, I no. never went on my State visit. No. So I, I remember you committed to Oregon State. And then after you committed was when, you know, your rankings start to fly up. You end up in the All-American game and and there was a bunch of coaches. And tell t tell me about after you committed to Oregon State and then prior to the early signing period, who were some of the coaches that showed up at Downey and tried to get you to flip? It was a few. Um, Oregon actually stopped. Uh, Dillingham stopped, so that was, but that was surprising because Dillingham he recruited me pretty hard. Yeah, but um, it was um, for sure. I remember Notre Dame, Michigan, UW kept calling, uh, Florida, and I think Ohio State called once or twice. But the schools that really pressed was Notre Dame and um, and UW. So, being that those both of those schools have a higher quote unquote prestige level than. Oregon State. What made you stay committed to Oregon State and and really Coach Jonathan Smith too? Uh, really, it was Coach Smith at the end of the day. I liked um, I liked how he, you know, how his process was. He was a walk on in, high, in college and ended up playing football four years, playing uh, on a scholarship, and also the fact that Oregon State is like an underdog school. You know, I mean, I didn't see myself going to Notre Dame. I'm not a Catholic, and I just don't feel like I can be a part of that program. No, no offense to them at all. Like I love the program, great program, yeah. but yeah, that's just not for me. And then um, UW, uh, it was just a lot of controversy with that with that topic. I mean, with, within my family and everybody, 
And I think Oregon State was the best fit for me. I felt like I could grow there. And also, the only school that gave me an opportunity to start as a true freshman. So I really had to take that in consideration and just move on with it and be like, yeah, okay, I can I can grow here. So so how, how was that transition? Because you enrolled early, and then here comes DJ Uyangalele. And yeah. now going from having a chance to start as a freshman, what? What was your mindset when he committed to Oregon State, being that you were told initially that you were going to have a chance to start? I mean, that opportunity to start as a freshman was never taken away from me. Like, I still competed with DJ like like I was going to play. But um, initially, I'm not going to lie, like, I, uh, I didn't, I've never told DJ this, but I, I was mad. Like, I was sick. I was like, dang, <laughs> they really brought him in. I'm not like, but um, well, after getting to know DJ and, like, playing with him and being on practice sidelines with him and everything, like, he's a great dude. And I'm so happy. I'm so happy for him and grateful for him because if with, I tell everybody, without him, um, that without that role model in that position that's had that experience, I probably couldn't be the player I am right now without him. So I'm really grateful for him. So what are some of the things that you got a chance to learn from him? Because he's a guy who was at Clemson, and well, highly touted coming out of high school. You know, people were excited about him. It didn't go the way that he wanted. Then he ends up at Oregon State you know, plays pretty well. What were you able to learn and gain from him? I mean, like, well, my year I played every third drive. So I'd watch him first two drives and I'd go in and, I'd, and he'd tell me what to look at and tell me what to, what he sees and what I should do when I see certain things. And, um, but overall, just his, um, his experience really helped me, you know, like he had all the, he was in the film room all the time, watching film. He was in the weight room extra all the time. And also just him being able to understand the game so well. So him coming off and telling me what he sees, it just taught me so much that I probably wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't have learned if he wasn't there. So it just, it um, it really excelled, excelled my game because I can go out there and see the same stuff he sees. And now it's easy to me, now it's quick because he just told me about it. So, yeah. So, so now you let us in on what we all knew was that you played every third drive. What was the – at what point in time did you know that that was going to happen during the season? At the beginning of the season, they, I was told that um, I was going to play no matter what. I was going to be a true freshman. Yeah. I was like, okay, the rest of me. Um, I didn't know how that was going to look until week four when he started. I thought, you know, Coach Smith thinking we're going to blow everybody out. You know, we played – it put me in at the end of the game. I mean, yeah, yeah. that's – yeah. But, um, no, so at the end of week four – Oh, beginning of week four, he put me in the game. Uh, at Washington State. No, I didn't play Washington State. I played Utah. Was that week four? Week five then? Was it week yeah. five? Yeah. Okay, week five, Utah. Okay, that's my fault. Week five, Utah. Played the third drive, and I I, I didn't do so well. Not going to lie, but, hey, we'll get over that. But, yeah, so week five, I knew for sure that I was going to play every third drive. And then uh, I think week six, I asked him again. He was like, yeah, just from now on, you're just going to keep doing that. I was like, all right. And DJ was cool with it. And that's why I'm so grateful for DJ because – you know, him being so late in his career, you don't have to be cool with that, you know? Like, no, no. Freshman coming in, yeah, exactly. So um, I really appreciate DJ for being cool with that, too, because he was like, he was like, hey, let's do it. I was like, All right, bet. Yeah, and what was the, like, so being that you knew that you weren't going to redshirt and you ended up throwing, you know, for a few hundred yards, four, four touchdowns, no picks, rushing for another hundred yards, where was the value in that versus the additional year? Because now you're a sophomore going into when you're when you're going to start at Michigan State. Yeah, I mean, sometimes I think about it like if I redshirted, it, it would be different for sure. But um, I'm actually grateful for it. I got the experience I needed, and now like I have that ability to start. Like last year, maybe if I didn't get that experience, I don't know what I would look like right now. So I'm I'm grateful for it, and I'm I'm really fine with it because I'm. Planning on playing three years anyway. That was that's all our goals, you know. We all want to yep. leave early and go to the league. Yep. So, yeah, so I definitely my, did. Yep, yeah. I did, and I got a chance to leave after my my junior year. But I think that that experience of being able to play Utah at Cal, UCLA, at Arizona, who was super good this year, and then at Colorado, Washington, at Oregon, like where where was your favorite place to play at aside from Men Corvallis last year? Mm. Uh, I liked, I liked when we played at, um, Arizona. I don't know. It wasn't, I like Colorado actually. I'm lying. I like Colorado. 
it wasn't the fact that it was just like the biggest crowd. Yeah. I just like they was just they they didn't like us. That's what I like, you know. I just yeah. like that. So yeah, um, that intensity, that rivalry. Yep. I didn't really play in any like big crowds. Like we didn't play at UW. Didn't play in the Rose Bowl. Um, did I play? I didn't play at Alton actually. They let DJ finish that game, and I was yep. fine. With it. Like yeah, but um, Alton, uh, that that atmosphere is different. Yeah, it yeah. is. <laughs> Yeah, we played it this year. It's different. Oh but, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the because the, the the crowd and I try to explain this to uh, people is that you've been to a bunch of different stadiums as a recruit and then playing in them like that. There's a few places uh, on the West Coast that respond like SEC stadiums and all of that stuff. And Oregon is one of them. Yeah. And. So when when you were at or Oregon State, so obviously the rumors about Coach Smith started swirling toward the end of the season. You guys had won eight games. There was still a possibility to win the Pac-12. Do you think that the the rumors about him potentially leaving that that impacted the team at all? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I mean, um, so when. We weren't told anything about him leaving like before the season was over, but we we had a we had a meeting with him and he said we're gonna focus on these games and nobody believed what he was saying because they thought he was leaving. So yeah. all the seniors and everybody else there, they was just like, Yeah, I mean he's out of here. So I mean that's really when they when we played Oregon, I don't think Oregon was on their mind. I, I think they coach out of here and that means basically I'm out of here. So uh I think that was what was going on right then and there. Yeah, and, and part part of it was, I think, the Pac-12, right? Is that the Pac-12 was clearly breaking up and everybody, like the, the, the writing was on the wall that something was going on after USC and UCLA left. If you went back to your recruiting and you knew that the Pac-12 was going to break up, do you think you would have, even in, even in hindsight, the way things have worked out, would you have made a different decision coming out of high school? Um, if I knew that was going to happen, I would take my Kansas State visit just in case, just to see, you know, just to see yeah. something different. But I honestly think I would still choose Coach Smith. I mean, he was, he's really the reason why I went to Oregon State. And at the end of the day, I think he's the reason I'm developed so much. So I'm, I think I would choose Oregon State again. Yeah. And so, so, Coach, so you guys, the season is affected at Oregon State. He leaves and takes the Michigan State job. And now you're at Michigan State. And I think everybody knew from the beginning, being that you were groomed to be next year's starter, that nah, he's probably going to Michigan State. So at what point in time did you know that, like, oh, wow, like, I might be going with this dude? Or, like, how is this going to work? Um, there was a point in time during fall camp where me and Coach Smith really got close. Because uh, during fall camp, I used to – so I went into fall camp as a 17 year old thinking that like, okay, I got to win this job. Yeah. So I was terrible for about the first six, seven practices. And I'm like, all right. Like, uh, so I go in and talk to coach Smith and I don't know. He just really, uh, he really helped me get through that situation. And, um, so me being as close as I was with coach Smith, like after that, we just got closer and closer and closer. And I started hearing the rumors and I started talking to my people, so my dad and my mom. And I was like, Hey, we might not be here next year. Like, that's just how it is. So yeah. I'm like, hey, cool. I'm with you. They, they, they want what's best for me. So, um, yeah, I told him, I was like, um, if Smith leave, then I, I'm, I'm out of here too. Like, it's just like that. Yeah. So how, how hard was it to, was, well, because obviously you chose Oregon State, you enjoyed Oregon State, and, you know, you had started to build a life there and everything else. Was it? Was it hard, even though that you were with Coach, Coach Smith and you bought into him? Because people will say, "Oh, don't follow the, don't commit to a school for a coach." But being that is different now, like, was it was it a hard decision to leave? Period. And then was Michigan State your only option? It was hard to leave. I mean, I'm, my parents didn't want to leave. I didn't really want to leave, but you know, it was a, a business decision at the end of the day. It's football. And it's going to be like that forever. So, but um, Michigan State was the only school I looked into that I really wanted to go to because of yeah. Coach Smith. 
But when it comes to options, I had I had a lot of options. I mean, um, the only school that I really entertained was USC, and simply because it's back home, and I wanted to hear what they had to say. And um, uh, I I liked it, but you know, I was I was committed to my coach, and that's just how it was. Yeah. So you so when when you first travel out to to East Lansing, and and you and you see the well, you get off the plane see the facilities what was your thought when you pulled up this place rich like that <laughs> <laughs> they got money that's, that's how it was but uh it's big 10 football they, i mean i walked in the stadium it's seating eighty thousand. uh biggest stadium i've ever stepped foot in that's how i feel and then um the facilities new straight strict new facilities already uh everything i don't know it's just it's rich it's rich that's how i feel <laughs> yeah. and is is that what you know like when you saw the stadium and you saw all all, all of that was did it at, at what point in time did you get comfortable with it because even though you were with coach, coach smith you mm -hmm. your fam everybody still had to have that comfort level with with the move and and other things so at what point in time did you get comfortable enough to be like all right i'm sure i want to do this um, it was on, it was on my second day of my visit when we went to go to academics and my mom met Mandy, our academic advisor. Yeah. And she was like, okay, I'm fine with you. Leave. I'm fine with you being here as long as she's here. I was like, all yeah. right. I think that's when it clicked that I was like, okay, I can, I can really live here and play football here. Yeah, that makes sense. And then there, a lot of you guys as coaches came over with coach yeah. Jonathan Smith, but what has it been like, like adding Aaron Flugrad to the uh, Smith and lingering mix? It's uh, different. Cause like, well, I come from Boyer. I don't know if you know coach John Boyer. Yeah. Yep. yeah. I come from coach Boyer and they're two different people. Like that's just what it is. Coach Boyer, he's been a, a, a little more experienced than flu and flu has been, he's a little, he's a younger, younger guy. So he's closer to our age. And um, it's for sure different, but it's it's still just it's just as good. I mean, you get different perspectives from both Lingren and Flu grad, and you just see it. However, like you just talk to him about it, and Flu's been amazing, man. Like being able to talk to him whenever I can, and go watch film with him, and see what he thinks. It's it's been great. I can't complain at all. And it's a, and you talked about how it's a business, right? That college football is now a business, and you had to make a business decision when when current players sit up and you guys turn on the tv and you hear all these old folks or you go on twitter oh my god i hate that the biggest problem is the transfer portal and and everything else what what is your reaction to that being that it is a business for everybody else it's a business for the coaches for the administrators for the schools but then they look at it like that the players are the problem and what's broken in college football um, sometimes I do think the transfer portal is a problem though. Like there's, there's sometimes where it's just like, yeah, I don't know about like these certain moves, but at the end of the day, like with how it's, how football's changed, how college football's changed so much with the NIL days and everything, um, the business decision, like it's, is way more common and you're going to see it. And like, that's just how it is. Like I've learned to get over it. So it is what it is. I, I see it every day now. Yeah. And so, so when 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 you and pops have gone out to uh, eat, have, have have you ever been like, nah, 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 dad, dad, I got it, I got it, dad, don't worry about it. No. <laughs> no, I'm not. No. If we eating together, he paid. Oh uh, man, you you can't take pops out for a steak, man. Nah, that's my dad. He he he's still my dad. He's still big dog. So hey, <laughs> he got it. He got it. No, nah, I feel that. Um, now, what what are you most looking forward to to this season over at Michigan State? I'm most looking forward to proving a lot of people wrong. I've just seen a lot of things. Like, I don't try to be on social media as much, but when I do go on social media, I see uh, five wins, four wins. I'm like, all right. Uh, so that's that's really just what I'm looking forward to. Uh, I think we have a better team than what people show, people give us credit for. So. I think we're just gonna show a lot of people this year. Hey, because there are a lot. I mean, I can't, I can't, can't lie. There's a, there's a lot of people that are looking at this schedule. They're like Florida Atlantic. Okay, Prairie View. Those, th those should be wins. But then you got to play 
Hey, man, that that uh, that that Ohio State Oregon stretch ain't gonna be no joke, bro. But, I'm already not. But what what does success look like for you personally and for the team for next year? Um, success, my success, based on the team success, really. It's just uh, we win games, but at the end of the day. Even if we don't win these games, it got to look like we put up a fight. That's what I'm trying to – that's that's really just what I'm here for. I'm not here to lay down for anybody. So the way they got it seen is just like we're just going to lay down and let these dudes run all over us. And, uh, yeah, that's that's just not what I'm here for. Well, that, that definitely ain't what Coach Smith is there for either because Oregon State – now, I remember he was he was the quarterback when I was at Oregon and we got a chance to play against him. And when he came back, Oregon State was a doormat at the time. And then he built it up to be, you know, like like y'all, you knew that when you played Oregon State that it was going to be a fight on your uh, hands. And then you guys are rebuilding the roster over there at Michigan State. So, like, when, when you look at your own personal success, are you saying – all right, man. I I, I want to be a Michigan State legend and and really help this program do something special over the next two two years for you, really. Yeah, I mean, I'm looking at it as if uh, I'm here to I'm here to help the team win. I mean, I want to be a household name just like everybody else want to be a household name. But um, yeah, I'm here to help the team win as as best of my abilities, even if. That happens to be I don't play. It is what it is, but I just want to – I'm here to win. So that's just what it is. Yeah. And when you guys went went through spring ball, what was the biggest difference, you know, being over at Michigan State besides your spring ball, uh, your first spring ball when you were still 17 years old at Oregon State? Um, I had to care a little bit more and the defense. So, like, to elaborate on that, when I'm, I came in 17 – Knowing DJ's here, I'm like, hey, I'm gonna just go, just go do whatever I want to do. I'm gonna go play football. So yeah. I go out there and I just play football. I was free, didn't think about anything, made mistakes, came back, did did okay. Like it was what it was. But um, now uh, I'm I, I'm taking reps with the ones, and now I got to be able to like lead my team. Like that's just how it is. And also the, seeing a new defense now. So going from seeing Bray's defense, now I'm seeing Coach Rossi's defense. Yeah, and it's different. So different athletes all over the field, but um, it was an adjustment for a few days, but it, it got easy real quick. Yeah, and when you're looking around at the quarterbacks that were ranked above you, around you, any of that, are you ever peeking around it? Like, well, I should, I'll ask you this: Who are the guys that you're looking at to to really gauge and see? Okay, hold up, let me let me let me see what this dude is doing in the process. Mm, not really. I mean, sometimes when I look at the rankings, actually, I'm not even gonna lie. Today, I was looking at the rankings with uh, my academic advisor today. But um, sometimes I just laugh. You know, it's funny to me. Uh, <laughs> some things that how things work, how like things move around, and how things play out is it's funny. And uh, yeah, I, I was looking at him today. That's funny. But yeah, <laughs> he said it's funny. All right. So what what is the thing that you look at when you're um when you're when you say that well I'll ask you again so when you say that that's funny why do you think that the rankings for high school players are not necessarily as as accurate in terms of their success when they get to college is it the coaching or is it something else it really depends on a player like certain players they rank so high and then some things don't play how they want it to play out. But it also it's also an attitude and mentality. Like, say you've been this five-star ranking this all four years of high school, and then you think you you just that guy, and you get to high school, you get to college, and it's not the same. But then you have those other dudes that aren't these five-star dudes, and they stay under the radar for so long, and they get to college, and they keep working how they was working in high school. It's different. Um, it, it does depend on the player, and it also depends on the area you're from, area, because um, – I mean, L.A., you know, rankings yep. in L.A., it's, it's different. It's tough out here in the streets, man, because it's so many good quarterbacks. Mm-hmm. Like, like, I remember when Damon and, you know, seeing you, seeing all the other kids that went off to go to college, I was like, 
bro, out here in Cali, bro, the cut the, the competition is like it's such small margins. Whereas if you're in a, a, another state, if you're in Iowa, N- Nebraska, you know anything like like that, like like he's the number one player in the nation. There he is. But so, also they talk about like competition, like in California, it's competition all over the place. So now if you're a good quarterback, it shows. Yeah, and then. Like you said, if you're in Iowa, I don't know how football looks in Iowa, but if the competition not there, you can say he's the number one quarterback, but how he's going to look in college. So it's things like that that you got to really just take into perspective. All right. Uh, final thing for you. Uh, so Warren versus Downey. You, <laughs> you, um, uh, Nico Iamalava, he's over at Tennessee now. Um yeah, his brother's over there at, at at Warren. What was that rivalry like? Uh, it really is the biggest rivalry, and I think in the nation, but in California for sure. Um, uh, it's it's it was crazy. I mean, it was a good game. I didn't play the first time; it broke my arm. But that second game I played in, it was it was that's the that's one of the biggest games I played in, like high school level wise. But. It, that it probably is the biggest game I played in, and it's they bring out extra seats, extra mm-hmm. it's getting up. It's it's big, man. I don't know why it's so big, but it's big. It's it's a big game, but uh, it's tough losing that game, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so yeah. if if y'all get a chance to play Tennessee in a bowl okay. game or something like, like 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 that, is there gonna be a little extra like that? Like like Nico, I need my get back, homie. It's smoke. Yeah, I, it's it's up there for sure. Uh, I, I lost them. I mean, we lost them twice. So well, my when I was at Downey. So, yeah, I need at least one. I need one of them. I need one of them back. So, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. And you guys, he is Aiden Childs, quarterback over at the Michigan State Spartans. Can't wait to watch you play this year, Aiden. Congratulations on your success, man, and good Good luck against everybody. Well, actually, I'll even wish you luck against my Oregon Ducks. I, I hope you throw for 500 yards and just, and just you know, and just lose. I'm sorry. <laughs> but I hope you win every other game except, except for that one. Hey, thank you, man. Thank you. <laughs> Appreciate it. All right.